1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now let me just pause right here. There was a sect of the Jews, the Sadducees, that did not believe in a resurrection from the dead. They just thought when you died, you just died like a dog, and that was the end. And so when it came to uh, folks being dead, there was, there was great controversy in that day. And the Apostle Paul, here writing to these young believers at this church in Thessalonica, wants them not to be ignorant concerning this thing. He said, concerning them which are asleep. Notice he didn't say them which are dead. Huh? Christians don't die. We just go to sleep, wake up in glory. What a blessing. And Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. So he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. The Sadducees had no hope. If a loved one passed away, they thought they'd never see him again, and most likely they wouldn't because they wouldn't be in Christ. Uh, but look what he goes on to say. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord uh, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, Wherefore, comfort one another uh, with these words. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Uh, thank you for being a good God. Uh, now, Father, help us. Uh, Lord, we desire your touch. We desire your help. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. So, Father, just move in this service. Get glory to your name. Uh, help your people. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, as a way of introduction, I want you to notice, first of all, the promise. Uh, notice the promise that Paul lays out here, that the Lord's coming back for His people. Uh, notice, if you will, he said uh, uh, in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus uh, will God bring with Him. Uh, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh, for the Lord himself uh, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, uh, notice he said... Uh, those that were asleep in Christ would God bring with him, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up uh, uh, together to meet with them uh, in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, can I say something, uh, uh, my dear friends? Uh, this is not the second coming of the Lord. Uh, this is the catching away of the saints. Uh, this is what is referred to as the rapture of the church. Uh, uh, friend, uh, this is the next great event in prof uh, prophecy. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, everything has been fulfilled. Uh, uh, Gabriel could sound the trumpet tonight. Uh, the archangel could give the shout. Uh, and hey, uh, graveyards will be emptied. Uh, and us that are alive and remain uh, will be caught up to be with the Lord. Uh, uh, what will happen, preacher? Uh, those that are gone on before us, uh, that are in heaven, uh, that died in Christ, uh, the Lord's going to bring their soul, uh, He's going to bring their body up out of the grave, uh, and in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, uh, that soul be reunited with that body and changed, uh, and given a glorified body like the Lord, uh, then we which are alive and remain, hallelujah, uh, Hey, we'll come out of this old uh, uh, tabernacle of flesh. Uh, hey, we'll be given a body like the Lord. Uh, and we'll meet them on the air. Uh, and we'll be with the Lord forevermore. What a promise, huh? We're just about out of here. 
Nay, if we get a body like his, there'll be no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more heartaches in these old bodies, uh, 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 no more pains, uh, as we'll have a body like the Lord. Uh, we see the promise. He's a coming. If you're saved, you're going. Yes, uh, what a blessing. But I also want you to look in the text about the peril. Thank God for the promise, but there's also peril. Look in chapter 5. Look at verse number 1. We have a conjunction. That word but means the whole thought's about to change. We're shouting, getting ready to go out of here. And now, all of a sudden, there's a new thought. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Hmm? When people don't expect it, that's when he's a coming. Can I say, people in this world are looking for everything but Jesus. Could be he's on his way. Are you listening? Huh? But he goes on to say, For when they shall say peace and safety... Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, uh, and they shall not escape. Boy, we've got a promise. Those without Christ are only, they only have peril. They've only got problems. The times of Jacob's trouble will fall upon them. And my dear friends, uh, they'll be left to, to face anarchy and, and face... Uh, a world that we can't even conceive of. Mm -mm. And by the way, let me help you with this. Let me just say this right now. There was a series came out probably 10, 15 years ago called Left Behind. And in that first book, I never read it, but I've read enough about it to know what happens. Uh, a fella gets left behind, the rapture happens, uh, then all of a sudden he remembers all the preaching about the rapture, he goes to the church, and he ends up supposedly getting saved and getting ready uh, uh, for the next uh, uh, exodus out of here. No, 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 no. In Second Th Thessalonians chapter number 2, we find that anybody's heard the gospel, rejected the gospel, the rapture happens, uh, the Lord will bring strong delusion on them where they'll believe a lie. There is no second chance for those that have heard the gospel. Hmm. And I say that even Pure Flix right now, I know a lot of you like Pure Flix, there's a lot of Bible, so-called Bible movies on there right now about the, uh, uh, the rapture taking place and all these folks waking up and realizing they need to get right to, uh, so they can go out of here after the tribulation. It's not going to happen. Hmm? Listen, you want to be ready for the rapture? Get ready now. Because after the rapture, it's too late. I realize, I've studied the Bible. There'll be 144,000 Jews that come out of the tribulation and get to go to heaven. And uh, Revelation chapter 7 tells us there'll be a great number that no man can number. But those people have not heard the gospel. Not in this dispensation. And when the church is taken out of here, my dear friends, uh, God's going to make a way for those folks to trust in Christ. Say, how, how, what, what's he going to do? I don't know, I, and I'm not really too worried about it because I'm going to be gone. But throughout the Bible, God's always had a way where man could come to him. It's always been by God's grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God will make a way. You say, well, who's that great number? Can I help you with something? India has, I don't know how many millions of people over there that have never heard the gospel. China has billions that have never heard the gospel. Are you listening? There are people on this planet that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. That's the crowd that's going to be given a chance to come to know Christ during the tribulation period. But I want to tell you what crowd won't come to Christ. That's the crowd that's from America. We've got a church on every corner. The gospel's been preached here forever. 200 years. We've kicked God out of our schools. You think God's going to open up the windows of heaven for a crowd like that? No. He's going to usher them right to where they deserve to go. Hell. Mm -mm. They make a hero out of the, uh, the justice that just passed away, Ruth, the, uh, whatever her name was. Uh, make, a, make a hero out of her. She was, she was for abortion. She was against God. And the moment she took her last breath, she went to hell, my dear friends. And the 
borders of hell are enlarged every day. It's nowhere in my notes, but that didn't cost you anything. We see there's a promise for us. Then there's going to be peril for the crowd that's left here behind. But then notice that you and I are to be prepared. Look what it says, chapter 5 again. Look at verse 4. But ye, brethren, again, there's the conjunction, but the thought's changing from peril. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God. (laughs) That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. He's saying, be prepared uh, because he's a coming. I ought to preach with God's help on this little thought. I want to preach on here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, I have no apology for the statement I'm about to make. Jesus is coming. Mm. Mark her down, neighbor. He's a coming. Uh, and he's coming a lot sooner than this world expects. Uh, and he's coming a lot sooner than most churches are looking for him to come. Uh, a matter of fact, if we knew how close it was, uh, we'd have had no fellowship for church. Uh, we'd all crawled in here on our face in this altar. Uh, beg God to revive us. Uh, beg God to save our lost loved ones. Uh, beg God to move uh, in this community in this day and age. Uh, friend, he's a coming. Uh, and we better get ready. Uh, hey, uh, can I say, first of all, he's coming to gather his jewels. Uh, hey, he's not coming to build a kingdom. Uh, he's coming to gather up that crowd that's put their faith and trust in him. Uh, Malachi 3.17 says, uh, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, uh, in that day when I make up my jewels, uh, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Uh, hey, uh, yea, look around. Uh, the world sees a bunch of religious fanatics. Uh, uh, the world sees a bunch of goody two-shoes. Uh, uh, the world sees a bunch of Jesus freaks. Uh, those crowd that goes to church three times a week. Uh, they think we're off our rocker. Uh, hey, but when Jesus looks at us, uh, he sees diamonds. Uh, he sees rubies. Uh, he sees sapphires. Uh, he sees his jewels. Uh, and he says, uh, they may think they're the Oscar of the world. Uh, hey, but that's a royal priesthood. Uh, a chosen generation. Uh, Hey, God looks at you in high favor. Uh, you want to bless the Lord. You're one of his. Uh, he's coming to gather up his jewels and take us home. Uh, can I say this? Uh, he's a coming in glory. Uh, he's not coming as a babe in a manger. He's not coming uh, as a broken shell of a man on a cross. Uh, he's coming up as the Lord of lords uh, and King of kings. Uh, he's the Lord of glory. Uh, Hey, the last time he left, the angels were in mourning. Uh, This time they're blowing trumpets and shouting it out. uh, Because they know uh, he's coming for his jewels. Uh, He's coming for glory. Uh, Hey, Matthew 16, 27 says, uh, For the Son of Man shall come uh, in the glory of his Father with his angels. uh, And he shall reward every man according to his works. Uh, He's a coming, hallelujah. In his glory, huh? We're not going to see the lowly Jesus. We're going to see the bright and shining star of glory, huh? His name is Jesus. Uh, Can I say he's coming to gather his jewels? Uh, He's coming in glory, uh, but he's coming to grant uh, us the redemption of the body. uh. Hey, uh, 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 we got saved. Uh, uh, Brother Clint said he got saved about 47 years ago. Uh, I got saved 47 and a half years ago. Uh, some of you got saved last year. Uh, some of you this year. Uh, some of you it's been 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, but your soul got saved. Uh, but friend, uh, that was just uh, uh, the first part of it. Uh, and when you got saved, the Holy Spirit uh, indwelled you. Uh, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, that was the earnest uh, of the possession, the earnest of the Spirit. Uh, but friends, uh, 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 that was the first step. Uh, but the completion's going to happen uh, uh, when our body gets redeemed. Uh, our soul's been redeemed, but our body's going to be redeemed uh, when we get that body like Him. Uh, Romans 8.22 says, uh, uh, For we know that the whole creation groaneth uh, 
and travaileth in pain together unto now. Uh, and not only they, uh, but ourselves also, uh, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, uh, even we uh, ourselves grown within ourselves, uh, waiting for the adoption uh, to wit the redemption of our body. Uh, when we get a body like His, then salvation will be complete. Uh, it's wonderful being saved. What can I say? When it's complete and our body catches up with our soul, uh, whoa, what a time that's going to be. Amen. Saying, here he comes. Jesus is coming. Well, can I say this? The Antichrist is also coming. Christ is coming, but so is the Antichrist. But they've got two different agendas. Huh? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. If you can't look around and see that everything's being put in order, if we's doing a jigsaw puzzle, we're right down to the last few pieces putting together for the whole thing to be unfolded. Huh? Can I say, The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only who, he who now letteth will let un until he be taken out of the way. And then, shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now listen, I'm interested there in verse 7 where he says, Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then that wicked shall be revealed. The Antichrist. He'll be revealed after he that letteth will let is taken out of the way. Who's that talking about? The Holy Ghost. You see, when the rapture happens, not only are the bride of Christ going out here, so is the Holy Ghost. The only thing keeping Satan from taking over this planet now is the Holy Ghost being present. The only thing keeping total anarchy uh, from happening on our streets uh, is the Holy Ghost is still here. Uh, 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 and He uh, has hedged us in and been a protector and been our guide. Uh, he leads us and guides us into all truth. Uh, but friend, when we go, He goes... Uh, and then uh, that wicked one will be revealed. Uh, I believe he's alive and well. Mm. Say, who do you think the Antichrist is? Doesn't matter. I'm not going to be here. Uh, but I promise you one thing. He's a coming. He's working on the scene. If you can't see what's going on, you're not looking. And the problem with a lot of Christians are we're ostriches. We want to bury our head in the sand, think, well, I'm saved, that's all that matters, and we don't look around and see everybody else is dying and going to hell. We don't look around, we don't read, we don't get informed on what's happening. We just uh, uh, stay within the four walls of our house. And all the while, the borders of hell are enlarged every day. This world's on its way to hell. The Antichrist is taken over and we're satisfied. We're like Hezekiah. When Hezekiah got word he was getting 15 more years, he didn't care that the enemy was going to come take all the treasures of God after he died. He just was glad he had 15 more years. And that's how we are. We don't care about the rest of the world as long as we're okay. Hmm? Can I say the Antichrist is coming and there will be governmental control? Matter of fact, there's going to be a one world government. And the government's going to control everything. If you can't look around and see that, friend, you're crazy. Hmm? They've tried through a virus to control, and they control many. Hmm? Now, listen. They're starting to say now that COVID and the flu are the same thing. I've been telling you that for 18 months. It's just the flu. But that's what the CDC is saying. You know what the CDC is also starting to say again? Masks don't work. Been telling you that too. Huh? You know the only thing that will keep you from getting it? An astronaut suit. Hmm. It's the flu. But they called it a big name. 
And they scared everybody to death and said, everybody's dying from it. How come it is that Florida has no restrictions, no mandates, and their uh, uh, folks that are getting it has dropped 88%? How come the country of Sweden dropped all mandates, dropped all restrictions, and their cases have went down dramatically because they started calling it what it was? I don't know, did y'all hear that Colin Powell died the other day? 84 years old, I know he was a great soldier, wasn't a great Secretary of State, but was a great soldier. But can I say this about him? By the way, most military men are not great in politics because they're used to receiving orders instead of giving orders, okay? But can I say this? He died, and all I heard, he died from complications of COVID till they found out he was fully vaccinated. And then all of a sudden he had a blood cancer. Let me help you some. Everybody in their 80s is going to die. Mm. Just trying to help you. They're trying to control. Have you watched what happened in Australia? In Australia, everybody had to get vaccinated. Listen, I'm not against vaccines. I've had the shingles vaccine. I've had mumps vaccine. I've had measles vaccine. I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm anti them mandating we have to be vaccine. This is still America. How come a woman can have a, her right to her body when it comes to abortion, but you can't have your right to your body when it comes to the vaccine? Hmm? I'm anti-mandate. In Australia, they were taking the children out of the parents' arms and jabbing them, children, with the vaccine. By the way, when the vaccine comes to the doctor, there, you, you know, there's no ingredients what's in it, and there's no side effects listed. Have you all watched TV? Have you all seen all the medicine commercials? And they'll tell you how it's going to make your skin clear up. Or they're going to, it's going to make your blood pressure go down. Or it's going to help you. Then they give the side effects. You're going to have anal seepage. You're going to have migraines. You're going to have parts falling off of you. Uh, let me have the bad skin before I get all that stuff. They tell you all the side effects. You know what they don't tell you side effects? The vaccine. Hmm. You can't buy a bag of potato chips without knowing what's in it. they got to give you all the ingredients to the potato chips. I just thought they were potatoes. But no, they got all kinds of stuff in there. But you can get jabbed with a vaccine and they won't tell you what's in it. Hmm? There's been enough evidence of how it's affects certain people. Some young people are getting enlarged hearts. Other people are getting blood clots. Other people are having very uh, uh, other problems. And even some are dying. They don't give you those statistics. Huh? For a vaccine to hit the market, normally it's studied four or five years so they can see all the side effects. And then they uh, see if it's good enough for the mass public. But they're mandated. And here's another thing. A recent Harvard study, and by the way, Harvard, I was just up in Boston three weeks ago. And when we was up in Boston, Harvard had 100% faculty and 97% of students were vaccinated. And they had to shut the college down because of an outbreak of COVID they couldn't control. It's a wonderful vaccine. Uh, Harvard did a study. And of all the new cases, 70% of the folks getting COVID were vaccinated. If it's a wonderful vaccine, how come you're still getting sick? And here's another thing. If you uh, work a job that require it, and they say you, can, you don't do it, you got to wear a mask, uh, and you got to get tested every week and all that. Uh, uh, but if somebody else gets it, they don't even have to quarantine uh, if they've been vaccinated. They can just go on. How come if a vaccinated person uh, can get sick and spread it, how come uh, uh, they're treated different than somebody that's unvaccinated? That sounds like discrimination to me. And I believe the Civil Rights Act of 1969 had a whole lot to say about discrimination. Hmm? What they need is me to be an attorney against all this junk. It's what they need. 
And I'm just a dumb hillbilly, but I can read. Mm -mm. I'm trying to tell you it's all about control. It's not about sickness. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, they know every year somewhere between 600,000 and a million people are going to die from heart disease. Every year. We don't really know the number of COVID deaths because anybody that died, like Colin Powell with a blood cancer, but uh, they said he had a runny nose, so they called it a COVID death. We don't know the true COVID deaths. But in Australia, they started vaccinating everybody. Then they started telling people, if you weren't vaccinated, you couldn't go from town to town. You could only stay in your little town. And then they started making everybody show their papers in order to try. You know, maybe you don't remember or you never read about it, but in Nazi Germany, you couldn't go places unless you had papers. It's all about control. Can I say right now in Italy, there's an upheaval in Italy because they won't let you travel from town to town unless you've been vaccinated. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, throughout the world, uh, uh, governments are starting to control their people and people that will not comply, they're called unvaxxers. They're the enemy. Stay away! It's all about control. It's all about divide. Can I tell you, the greatest military strategy has always been, will always be, is called divide and conquer. When America's united, America's strong. America's been divided now for about 18 years. The Antichrist comes, it's about government control. You know why what is happening in Australia, Italy, other parts of the world, India and everywhere else, you know why it's not happening here yet? It's because some 400 million gun owners in America. How come congressmen and women don't have to be vaccinated? How come the United States post office workers don't have to be vaccinated? But the nurses who were heroes last year working during the pandemic now are enemies because they're not being vaccinated. Mm -mm. Explain it to me. Mm -mm. Who gets to pick and choose? Government employees don't have to be vaccinated. But you do. Sheep. Nancys. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. There has been so much debunked by what Fauci has said in the last two months that if you do anything he says, you're an idiot. Mm. It's absolutely crazy. Antichrist is coming. It's going to be animal. There's going to be government control. There's going to be global concession. All the nations are going to concede. Now explain this to me. Postal workers don't have to get vaccinated. Congressmen don't have to get vaccinated. The 600,000 illegal immigrants crossing our southern border every month don't have to be vaccinated. You tell me somebody from down in Honduras has got a better health record than Americans? Do mm -mm. you know what the CDC said this last week? Natural immunity against this thing is better than the vaccine. We're talking about all the illegals don't have to be vaccinated. Why? Because they want them to vote for Democrats next time. That's what that's all about. If you don't know that, something's wrong with you. You know, and if they don't vote for them, they'll just change the vote in the middle of the night anyway. But listen, we're talking about global secession. This is what I don't understand. We got the southern border crossing crisis. Crisis. Who's going to feed all this crowd? Have you seen the grocery store shelves? Hmm. I read this this past week. You know why truck drivers are not going into California, even if the ships land in port in California and bring all the junk from China that we now have to have to fill up Walmart so we can have Christmas? Uh, you know why truck drivers are not going there? 
because the wonderful state of California and their liberal governor who hates oil and water and everything else put into law that truck drivers are not allowed in the state if their truck is older than three years. And by a certain date out there in the not too distant future, they have to have electric semi trucks. Now, I don't know about you, I'm not a truck driver. I've known some truck drivers, have relatives who are truck drivers, but them rigs cost anywhere from two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars. Hmm? It takes more than three years to pay one of them boogers off. One truck driver said this past week that his diesel fuel increased cost since Biden has been president. The cost of his diesel fuel is more than his truck payment. Hmm. The Kroger's can't get groceries. Can I say, if they can't control you by a virus, you know what they'll control you by? Food. When people don't have food, they'll do whatever the government says. But we've got the crisis in California about the ships that can't uh, come to port and get rid of all the stuff that we need. Uh, 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 we got trucker crisis. We got southern border crisis. Uh, we got where's Joe in the White House crisis. Uh, I mean, they even come up and they build a stage that looks like the Oval Office where he shows up at because he don't go to the actual Oval Office because it's five more steps and he can't make it. Uh, I mean, uh, who knows? Uh, 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 but listen, we got all these crises. And two days ago, they sent a contingent of our congressmen, including, if you want to call her the vice president, I won't tell you what I call her, uh, to a summit on global climate change. Why don't we fix the border, fix the, uh, 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 the shortage in our, our... Hey, listen, I don't know. I, I don't agree with everything he had to say, but guess what? The grocery store shelves were full when Trump was in office. Uh, hey, gas was less than $2 a gallon when he was in office. Uh, hey, your 401k looked a lot better when he was in office. Uh, hey, uh, but it's all about all these governments. Listen, they're not over there about climate change. Uh, uh, they know that's a bunch of bunk. Uh, uh, they know the term follow the science. There is no science for climate change. Uh, all these officials uh, uh, from the globe are meeting uh, and they're discussing how they can control you and I. It's what it's all about. About global secession. And I say this, the Antichrist is coming. Thank God Jesus is coming. But for those who don't know Jesus, the Antichrist is coming. And he's coming for the genocides of the contrarian. People that will not comply, they'll just murder. You say, that'll never happen. Again, look at World War II. Hitler killed at least six million Jews. Uh, that's not talking about people that were born with handicaps. He killed them too. Mm. That's not counting how many people were killed global-wide because of the war. Mm. Listen. They'll kill anybody that stands in their way under the Antichrist. And by the way, we can go and show you in the book of Revelation where they're hunting down Israel again. She has to flee to the wilderness because they're hunting her down to kill her. That's what the Antichrist has come to do. Purge anybody that don't receive the mark of the beast. Those that will be redeemed through the great tribulation period will have to be willing to die for it, friend. They'll have to become martyrs. And I want to tell you something. I don't know why in Burlington, Kentucky, they built a, 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 a National Guard readiness center, but there's one there. I don't know why there's a concentration camp two hours up the road on I-74, but there's one there. Can I say, uh, in my travels everywhere I go, I'm seeing these National Guard readiness centers uh, popped up everywhere. I was driving to church yesterday. Can I help you with something? I saw a Black Hawk helicopter flying uh, 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 over uh, our airspace uh, on the way to church yesterday. Why do we need Black Hawk helicopters uh, in Burlington, Kentucky, in Florence, Kentucky? There's not a threat here. Uh, why is it? Why is it they're getting ready for something? What's it, what are they getting ready for? The Antichrist. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. The Antichrist is coming. Woe to them that don't know Christ. But friend, even before the Antichrist comes, I've got news for you. The devil's coming. The devil's coming. Oh, yes, he is. 
First Peter 5, 8 in the Bible for a reason. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's coming. And he's coming to destroy you and your family. Because he don't want you to be a light to somebody else that the Antichrist can't get a hold of. Hmm. Can I say? He's coming. He's coming to make you inactive by being active. The devil knows most of you have been around preaching long enough. You read your Bible enough. You pray. He knows he can't get you caught up in heinous, wicked sin. So, he pats you on the back, tell you you're doing a good job. And he makes you inactive in the things of God by being active in other things. I've never seen a time where you can't have revival meeting, you can't have anything else because everybody's got plans. Used to, everybody made their plans around the church. Used to, everybody wanted to know when revival meeting was uh, because used to, revival meeting would go two, three, four, five weeks. We can't even get one to go a whole week uh, uh, because preacher, uh, we can't because we've got PTA, we got ball practice, uh, and we got this event. we got to go to this show. we got to go to this uh, uh, thing that's going on. And preacher, you know, uh, I just need a break. It's kind of tough. Uh, I've had it really rough. I need a break. Uh, I know what we need is get right with God. Uh, we need Jesus. Uh, we need revival. Uh, we need a touch from God. Uh, hey, we need the power of God to fall on the church again. Uh, hey, we need to get on fire again. Uh, hey, we need to see this community torn up because God's in the house again. Uh, hey, we need to get the shout of a king again. Uh, hey, we need revival. Uh, the devil's coming. He's just made you inactive by being active. Oh, you're not doing anything wicked, but you're not doing anything for God. Mm, he's got you right where he wants you. Uh, can I say he's trying to make you insignificant? He don't care if you're saved. He just wants you insignificant. He just wants you to be a bump on a church pew. He don't want you making a difference for Christ. He doesn't want you giving out tracts. Uh, he doesn't want you telling anybody about Jesus. Uh, he doesn't want you shining for God on the workplace. Uh, he doesn't want you praying over your food uh, at the restaurants. Uh, and he certainly don't want you to come to the house of God uh, and shout it out and have a time while you're here. huh? He wants you to be insignificant. He wants you to be one of them that people don't know if you're here or not here. Mm. They have to scratch your head and think, was so-and-so there tonight? Uh, I want you to be insignificant. You know what? Your life ought to count for Christ. Let me say it again. Two people said, yeah, hey, amen. Your life ought to count for Christ. He gave his life for you. You ought to live your life for him. Uh, but he's trying to make you inactive by being active, and he's trying to make you insignificant. Can I say this? The devil's coming. He wants you to be intimidated. Just like the government, he wants you to be intimidated. Hmm call you all kinds of names for doing right here's the name you ought to be looking for well done thou good and faithful servant uh, I don't care what the devil says about me I'm concerned about what Jesus is going to say about me uh, he wants to intimidate you not to live for God well what will people think of you who cares I'm interested in what Jesus is going to say about me and by the way, I found that if you live for God and if you're light for God, there might be some that don't want, don't want to have anything to do with you, but I find there's, there's a crowd who kind of enjoys being around you. So seeing that the Antichrist is coming and even more than that, the devil's coming, what should we do? We know Jesus is coming, but what shall we do till he comes? We're going to have to contend with the devil. Mark her down. And we're going to have to deal with the system that the Antichrist is building. Mark it down. Well, what are we to do? Well, it's right here. Look with me in verse 6 again. Chapter 5. Therefore, let us not sleep as, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Three things in that verse we need to do. First of all, be awake. Did he not say, let us not sleep as do others? A lot of Christians have been lulled to sleep. A lot of things I had to say made some of you uneasy. You know why I know those things? Because I read. 
I'm not asleep. I'm trying to make sense of what's going on. And I'm trying to warn you because I know many of you don't read. You've fallen asleep. You've fallen asleep at your post. We're to be awake. Or have our eyes wide open to what is going on in this world and what's going on in the lives of sinners. You know what sinners are doing? They're looking for groceries. They're looking to make sense of this world. And they're looking for light at the end of the tunnel. We're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to point them to Jesus. You can't do that being asleep. We're to be awake. We're also to be alert. Look what it says. Let us, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. We're to be alert. We're to be looking around. Hmm? When you're not paying attention, that's when you're going to get robbed. The thief cometh not but for to rob, kill, and destroy. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You need to be alert. You may not know this. I know this because my son is a deputy sheriff. There has been an absolute siege of car thefts in Boone County. I think in the last couple months, 40 cars have been stolen in Boone County. You know where they're being stolen from? People's driveways. There is a gang coming out of Cincinnati. Here's the sad thing. They're all teenagers. They're coming over here, stealing cars, and taking them back over there. They're either stripping them or wrecking them. It's a rampage. It's, it's an absolute catastrophe. And by the way, they're not just going to the Triple Crowns. Most people in Triple Crown have security systems. They have lights that come on in their driveways. They keep their cars in garages. They're going to neighborhoods like mine and yours. Not yours. Yeah. Well, they couldn't find it. Let's go to, let's go to Boggy Lane. Run into Bigfoot out there. They're coming to neighborhoods. And they're walking up driveways and they're looking in your cars to see if you've left a purse or a phone. Or you'd be amazed at how many people leave their keys in their car and the cup holders. They break a window, they're gone. It's unlocked, they, they open it, they take everything. You know what they're getting out of a lot of stolen cars? People keep their weapons in their, in their cars, in the glove box. A lot of the shootings that are going on in Cincinnati right now and Avondale and Evanston, you know where the gums are coming from? Northern Kentucky. Hmm? You say, why are you saying all this? People aren't alert. You didn't know that there was an epidemic of people getting their cars stolen in Northern Kentucky until I just told you. You're not alert. They're coming to your neighborhood. They're coming to my neighborhood. Have your weapon at the front door. When you see them, lock and load. Are you listening? They'll run. One of the doctors Miss Annette used to work for had some friends over. They're in the backyard around the swimming pool. They walked up in the driveway, took the guy's car out of the driveway. Alexis is gone for a month. They found it destroyed. Hmm? I'm telling you, they're coming into your neighborhoods. You need to be alert. Well, if they're coming after your cars, i got good news for you. The devil's coming after you. You need to be alert. Hmm? Look around. Know your surroundings. Hmm? I preached that message not too long ago about the crows. Watch out for the crows. Not everybody that says they're saved is really saved. The devil sows in we we weeds among the uh, tares among the wheat. Are you listening? You put some people in your life to bring you down. You need to be aware. Watch. Be alert. Not only that, you need to be awake, alert, and aware. Be sober. That's what it says. But let us watch and be sober. That's the same term we used in 1 Peter 5 8. Be sober. Why? The devil. You need to be aware. Pay attention. Read. Know what's going on in your world. Don't take the news media 
their word for it. All they do is read the talking points that somebody from the Antichrist's realm has given them. You know how I know that? It don't matter if you watch Fox, CNN, local news, they all say the same thing, same headlines. There's no longer any reporters. There's people that read what's put on the, on the, the screen in front of them while they're in front of the camera. So you need to be aware. Don't be caught off guard. Because Jesus is coming. You've got to be looking for him. You've got to keep your eyes on the sky. And then look around. Look back to the sky. Look around. He's coming. Then in the meantime, the devil is unleashing everything to destroy lives. You realize in World War II, the only reason that the world isn't flying swastikas today is because... Some 18, 19 year old men from America went over there and made a difference and we won the war can I say the only thing keeping this world from being in total anarchy and the only thing standing between, between hell and most people you come in contact with is you God's people we want to do everything we can to live for Jesus Tell them about Jesus. Promote Jesus. But we need to be awake, alert, and aware. Because Jesus is coming. And after he comes, the Antichrist is coming. In the meantime, the devil's coming. Hmm? And listen, there's nobody in this building really dealt with the devil. We just deal with his imps. But when he shows up, you better be full of God. I wonder. If Jesus came tonight, are you ready to meet him? Because he could come tonight. If Jesus came tonight, how many of your friends and loved ones wouldn't go? You might be the only person standing in their way of hell. Are they using you as a stumbling block to get to Jesus, or are you going to be a stumbling block to kick them over into hell? They can either be a stepping stone or a stumbling block, friend. What are you? If you're not ready for Jesus to come, I guarantee you, those around you aren't ready for him to come. And until Jesus comes, are you ready for what the devil's going to throw at you? See, that comes to building yourself up on your most holy faith. How much faith you got, friend? How much God you got? in your life so when the devil shows up that's all that's going to help you is the Lord in your faith I wonder here he comes are you ready let's all stand Brother Clint come give a song of invitation most of what I had to say there wasn't in my notes but God knew we needed it Jesus is coming are you ready the devil's on his way are you ready how do you know that preacher because of revival he don't want us to have revival. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scripture. Thank you for the promise that you're coming. Hallelujah. We can shout on that. But Lord, help us to be sober, awake, alert. Help us, Lord, to live for Christ until Christ comes. Help us to make a difference in the lives of those that aren't ready. God, help our church to be a beacon and a light in this dark and depraved world. Lord, we know the Antichrist has an agenda, but until Jesus comes, we're to have an agenda. We're to take the gospel to every creature. Help us, Lord. Bless this invitation. Bless these in the, inv in, in the altar tonight. Get glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.